Hi, I'm Anthony Galdi. And I'm Sean McCourt from Behind the Emerald Curtain. We're here to guide you on a backstage journey through the world of Wicked. Today we'll take another look at the amazing scenic design of the show with a sneak peek at the famous Oz Head. Join us as we learn how this integral piece was designed, created, and operated from the professionals who make it happen. The Oz Head, yes. First of all, it was like, what does the Oz Head look like? You know, there was the Oz Head in the, in, in the books, you know. We uh, once again turned to Bob Flanagan, uh, uh, who worked on the dragon, for the Oz Head. Eugene stopped me in the hall and talked to me about the possibility of making the wonderful Wizard of Oz Head um, for the throne room. There again, he said, I want you to go back and I want you to look at the original drawings of the Oz Head. Bob uh, made six or seven Oz Heads, at least, little models of different ones. Better half dozen maquettes of, of what I thought the head should look like. I have one sitting in my studio at home. I don't know which one it is. Looking at the construction of the old, with the Tin Man, how he was constructed, kind of came up with a, with a concept of, of what this Oz head would look like if it was built in Oz. It's operated by the stagehand behind with the smoke and lighting effects accompanying it. The mouth is by a, basically a, a bike brake handle cabled uh, to the mouth so you can open and close it. With uh, hand grips and, and, uh, and, and little pulleys. The eyes can go left and right. Uh, you can blink eyes with another uh, brake cable. The eyebrows can flip up and down with this, uh, actually a bass drum uh, kick pedal designed by Bob Flanagan, who put this together really with uh, a lot of imagination. And it also has various effects built into it. The eyes have LED lights that can change to any color. There's smoke that emanates out of the floor of the wizard apparatus that allows it to be lit in a very scary fashion. The head is supposed to be terrified, as we remember from the original movie, being terrified by that big green head that we saw. The first thing that I had to do was get used to which part of the body do I control with which hand and how do I coordinate that and learn it with my body. How do I make it look alive with the movements that I have available to me? That's the fun part of it. The actor who plays the wizard is delivering his lines through a microphone standing behind the wall prior to his dramatic entrance. PJ, the, the wizard, have had this joke since I started that I'm channeling him through me to the puppet and we're like acting as one. We really talk about him setting me up with that head because if, if I'm going, I am Oz, and he goes, I am Oz, it doesn't mean anything, you know? So we really got on our wavelength together and the head is an extension of me and it's the first thing the audience sees of me. And that has to make it, that has to score. Let me talk you through what the, the movements would be when the wizard is actually recognizing Elphaba. I am Oz! I am Oz the Great and Terrible! Who are you? And why do you seek me? To realizing that it's someone he wants to know and befriend. Oh, is that you, Elphaba? I didn't realize. So it goes from looking straight ahead with dead straight eyes and forceful speech to the turning of a head, turning of the eyes, and the surprised eyebrows up with my right foot. After a while, that just becomes part of your body. I do believe that we have added to the mystique of the wizard character. Even when he's not moving on stage, even when the wizard is out in front and his alter ego is sitting silent, he's there. The Mr. Hyde, if you will, of, of the wizard is, is still there present in the background. It just becomes part of what I need to do without even thinking about it. Operating the Oz Head is about the closest I've come to performing than any time else in my prop man career. It's really puppetry at its finest.